whether that could be turned around so that by early to mid-September you're able to award a contract to somebody who would be available to finish within the six weeks following the September meeting. Right. After November, you don't know what the weather is no. going to be. Right. right. I think there's a very good possibility that we're looking at spring. It's spring yeah. I think okay. it's important for us not to try and force right. Right. something to be done that can't be done well. Yeah. Um, I do think I agree with Dr. Rogers that the project should be done as a whole. And if that's the case, then I think you do, you will exceed that $25,000 limit. Yep. Oh, absolutely. You will need oh, yeah. to go uh, request for qualifications route, and that will, by its own nature, take us down another month or two. So I just, yeah, I mean, I think it's a big enough project with mm -hmm. enough moving pieces that you don't want to parse it out. Right. Plus, so. you've got the director search, and you've got a whole, right. you've got two co-directors that are doing right. double duty. So I think. Right. So that's where things stand. I think we have a project that we're comfortable with, that we like, that we think is a good project, but it just may gotcha. need to be put okay. off. Okay, that makes. Thank you. Yeah, that makes. But yeah. we'll talk with the we'll architect talk when she comes yeah. back. Yeah. And there are still, yeah. and there's still yeah. some back and forth going on with, in terms of details on the plan. Right. Plants and so on, but excuse me. Okay. So that's the landscaping project. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, which may give us some time, you know, more time to do other things in terms of fleshing out the plans and right. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. All right. Next step in the director's search project. Well, um, we met today with uh, our search committee. We, uh, you know, reviewed candidates and you know, we're ready to take the next step forward, which should be Skype interviews with candidates, and that's moving along nicely. That's all we can say on the subject. Except that I think we did a really fine job choosing the uh, people who are, who are doing this, who are putting it all together. Our search yes, I was very yeah. pleased with uh -huh. the work that uh, Bradbury did. I think, I, think, I think they did a good job, yes. and... I think, you know. Okay. Yeah. There was a pool of 23, I think, for details, because that's part of the open meeting, and we've narrowed it down to eight mm -hmm. for preliminary. Eight or, eight or nine, yeah, eight, yeah. And oh, one yeah, it was eight or nine. Right. Eight plus one alternate. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, so there's that. Now, here's something more fun. Um, <laughs> uh, Dropbox at 4th and Linden. Who wants to talk about the Dropbox? Well, we have, I, I think you all have heard this before, I'm not sure, but there is a, a, there's a resident who lives in that area who has suggested this over the years. Um, the reason he is suggesting 4th and Linden is because it is a transportation hub. Mm -hmm. This would be a Dropbox that's pedestrian oriented, so it would be on property near the CTA, but hopefully not on CTA property. Um, and uh, I think it makes sense to put it near the transportation hub for the, one of the transportation hubs for the community. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to let the board know that there is this request out there. We are looking at the potential spots in that area. And that's really all I have to say at this point about it. I think it's a terrific idea. I, um, I think the more we can do and try these kinds of things and we'll know if it's successful or if it's not successful. If and, not, we'll move it someplace um, else. Pardon? If not, we'll move it someplace else. I we'll see, we'll I see a bike drop box. You know, it's the phantom toll booth <laughs> drop box. It'll be, it'll be a low one. It won't be a high one, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't. They they stop can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe they sell the low ones anymore. Oh. No, no. They, they don't. don't. Okay. Would we want it in the station? Getting it in the, in the CTA station would be really difficult yeah. to manage. Plus the, the pick it up. We have Plus to pick up the blocks with, with Nick, you know, with those discussions. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be in the CTA station. It can There's There are people that are taking the bus there, that are parking and going into the CTA station right. that are just walking through yeah. that neighborhood. Actually, walking so. to Gilson yeah. Park. I don't know if that, yeah, so I don't know if like in the yeah. summertime if more people yeah. might use it as a, you know, yeah. on the way to mm -hmm. there. 
<laughs> and there are other tenants there on that, as it were, tenants at that point. You know, there's the uh, right. chamber is there. Mm -hmm. North Shore Community Bank has mm -hmm. right stuff right. there too. So right, it would yeah. So and it doesn't need to be bolted down. No. So it can be if the site doesn't work, we can always move it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Should have one of those uh, friends of the libraries things we have at the recreation center. Should have one at the Fourth of London too with those books where people can mm. use. That might be a little more difficult. Yeah. I think you know we've occasionally had conversations. There's there's a number of different spots in the village that you know is it's, we yeah. you know we might consider. Um, right. And you and I have talked about different spots. Um, and we'll just see which ones work. Right. Good. So, good luck on and getting somebody to agree to let us put our box <laughs> well, somewhere right. there. Are, that's the question. Are you point on it? Like, are you the point person on it? I believe yeah. so. Yes. I like. Um, I'll talk with you offline. I know some folks over there, so maybe we can get into the CTA station if we'd want to. Yeah. Okay. But then also you want easy ease of pickup for right. the library too. Right. It's always open. But I mean in terms of holding in as opposed to driving through to put the books in. I'm just thinking. Of sure. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think that's great and it's just the sort of thing in terms of outreach that we talked about in our strategic plan of being open to these, you know, trying things and see what works and what doesn't work. So I think that's great. Uh, Director's report. All right. Mm -hmm. So I hope you've noticed our new collection of tote bags. They've been right. so popular that we um, added another hundred for circulation. So, and we've also um, have them for sale. Mm -hmm. I did ask, we've only sold seven so far, so they're not top sellers but at least they're available and it's a real convenience for patrons to be able to even just they're all over the library you know take a bag fill it with books check everything out take the bag home and um, so that's worked out very well and um, so at the end of the fiscal year we've reached the end of our fiscal year and I found it interesting just that we um, had a net increase even we add a lot of books we're withdrawing a lot of books but we still came out ahead over 4,000 books and over 1,500 visual materials like DVDs, Blu-rays, but our um, audio materials, we're buying less, they're circulating less, um, they're just not being used quite as much. Are the audio e-books increasing though? In terms well, that, I'm talking about physical materials. Oh, yeah, yeah those just are. Saying, right. Is that taking the place of it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We also have streaming music service, um, Hoopla, that's taking the place of a lot of that. So it's just reflecting what we hear the trends are. Plus, new cars don't even have CD players anymore, so people don't have a you know mm -hmm. place to pop them in. Like it's just a, a <laughs> shift in what's popular. Um, we're making plans for our library card sign-up month in September. That's coming up. And also the other thing that I mentioned, which I thought was really nice, Betty actually found it, that JJ's List has an online disability aware business directory, and Wilmette is included, which I think that's great for acknowledging the commitment that we have to servicing people with mm -hmm. disabilities. Mm -hmm. But also there were some lo lovely reviews there all positive. Some were written a while ago, all positive, zero negative. So, all right. yay for Wilmette. <laughs> um, so the asbestos work was done and now we're trying to figure out where that leak is coming from. And so what's going to happen, it happened, it may happen again, that some of the collection was just not accessible for a short amount of time. And we don't have an exact date for when our new signs are going to be installed, but facilities have been working very hard. I think you've probably noticed it around where they're um, just taking off the old signs, you know, what's it called, spackling and painting in preparation for when the new signs will be up. And also we are talking about a, um, a different way of handling our security cameras. Um, we have a proposal that Betty and I will talk about. We'll have a meeting, and Rick is also in on it as well. We just want to make sure that we're 
utilizing the most um, cost-efficient way of monitoring and accessing the information on our security cameras. Um, thank you very much. We all got letters with our cost of living adjustments, and we mm -hmm. appreciate that. Um, oh, also, we we we're having a lot of discussion, and I talked to Kathleen about this, and we may end up putting this on one of the agendas, but. Our ILS system, our public catalog, has a, a feature that's called associations where you can associate, it has to be both, both parties agree to the association and then they can pick up each other's holds, they can pay each other's fines. And we did have a patron request to have this turned on for all of our patrons. But it's caused a lot of interesting discussion among the staff. Um, privacy issues, whether or not a minor has the ability to really give informed consent, and then what happens when the minor, maybe when they're 10, that makes sense. When they're 13, they may want a little bit of privacy from what their parents see that they're checking out. So it's it's a very interesting topic. Right, and we did talk about it, and um, there's differences in the staff, and I said, well, yep. this is probably one that you can appropriately boot to the board to make a decision on this kind of First Amendment privacy. At what point do minors in a household have their own right to privacy? And I suggested that um, at a certain point, you know, that there is materials and that we could, you know, pull together materials and educate the board in something that we can we discuss a, about. But we also talked about having maybe a panel discussion with right. the staff of pros and cons and some of the things mm -hmm. and inviting the parents because that tends to be the age and getting some of their input if they'll come. It, you know, it's a tough come. issue. Yeah, there's right. a lot of come, But I would like their feedback as opposed to just Internal feedback. Yeah. yeah. Um, one question about the way the process would work is: Is there other fields available so that we could specify that you have to be 18 or older to share with somebody else? So that way, you at least you could you could offer that feature without, and then deal with the the, the issue of younger patrons at a later time. That's possible, but there's also issues with adults oh, and there are, their okay. privacy issues oh. as well. Even if they both consent with each other? Well, I, their I consent know. may be fine in 2018, uh -huh. but in 2020 when they're deciding maybe they're going to get a divorce, uh, then maybe there's... And who divorce thinks... Divorce for dummies? Right? Can, you, <laughs> can, you, can, you, can, you, can you go to your own account and opt in or out? out? I mean, so that it becomes the patron it would have that of their own... But yes, but they'd have to remember to do that. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of... Okay. Right. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Other libraries have done it. We're in the period of investigating okay. what is, you know, and Betty, I know, has talked to people at ALA. So, yeah, it's an interesting philosophical discussion that... Um, and you can see with when it's just eight-year-old and you go looking for that last whatever book under the bed of, you know, well, right. because you know it's out and it makes enormous right. good sense in that situation. Right, it's very practical. But... but Right. As the child gets older, or right, it's well, not you quite have so adults with disabilities too. Right, mm -hmm. right. There's and cognitive so impairment. Right. It just, I mean, it seems like right. a nice convenience to offer to patrons right. people we can navigate the issue right. that you're citing. You know, so uh, maybe. I mean, I know we have to renew the, your your. I just don't see how a minor could give. Real right, informed. Really yeah. informed. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, if, if, if it could be triggered so you have to be 18 or older, then you, at least you you separate half the issues. I don't know, or get rid of at least half the issues. It has to be done be a staff member. It's not something oh, that you can... Oh, a patron can, can't do it on their own. No. I see. Okay. So that would fix that, but it still yeah. doesn't fix all the other yes, issues. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's something that may well come across, right. yeah. and we'll figure out how to get ourselves yeah. appropriately educated. And um, I think it's also a good idea, though. It's helping the staff to um, reevaluate some of the practices we do have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Um, for example, we're looking at maybe the way we have the holds on the hold shelf with just a little, you know, and that's another issue because, okay, we did a little strip because it was greener. Do we use, do we waste like a whole sheet of paper? Right. So there's, Lock it off, yeah. yeah, there's a, a variety of things that we're looking at. So, mm -hmm. it's, so very interesting.
Unless yeah. you can get recyclable book covers and then right and recyclable then, right and then, and then just take it off when you, they check and bring, it out and bring right. it back in and then return it yeah uh, no they can ch take it off once they've checked it out right but then yeah, return, it to, the, return, return it to return it to circulation yeah. or yeah. to yeah. the front yeah. desk yeah I mean there's just a number of different things and there's also commercially available book wraps as well so and I think well the system can work to create a book wrap so there's all sorts of things that we need to think about and talk about. And there are other libraries that are using it now, so that's interesting too, mm -hmm. to see how they're, doing it. how they're doing it and if they've had any issues mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, so staff went to the webinar, and we're also talking about sharing our strategic plan in a little bit more accessible way, like a one sheet explanation of what our, our strategic plan is. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a, a new um, MAC network up now, because we had MACs in the youth department that weren't able to be reserved, so they're now on our PC res system, and they'll soon be on the, print, the um, printing system as well. So that, that's great. That's something going forward um, that the youth department has really wanted for a long time. So it's finally happening. And we have a new database that I think may be of interest to the board. It's a um, record information.